Good news, I finished first in monthly gamer score. The bad news, I was competing against myself. Let's get to the rarest World at War Zombies achievements on every map. If you enjoy this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. I'm going to do the rarest achievements on all the Zombies games at some point, so let me know in the comments what should be next. I need to address something, especially if you've seen any of my other videos and know how I run them. Nocturne, and Toten, and Varuk don't have any achievements. It's like after Varuk, Treyarch thought, Oh hey, 15 year old Zombies dad jokes loves playing Zombies. Better add something he can work on 15 years from now and upload to YouTube. To compensate for only having two maps in this video, I decided that I would feature the four rarest achievements on both Shino Numa and Darice. As always, this is by percentages on the Xbox. So loading into, well shit, that took a lot longer on my PS3 back in 2009. Here we are in Shino Numa, a big map for the Zombies universe. It was the first to introduce a new wonder weapon, the first to be set outside of Germany, and most importantly, it introduced the beloved main cast. These days we call them the Ultimus, but back then, nerdy sounding things were not cool yet. I also couldn't play this map around my mom because Dempsey drops too many F-bombs. I'm splitting this into two games, so if you see any discrepancies in points or doors open, I don't want to get called out years later for faking this. It's not a 115 attempt on Keynote or Toten after all. It's also because one of the achievements took a long ass time, but the setup and how I start is relatively similar. Three of the rarest four achievements are Deadheaded, Soul Survivor, and... Deadheaded requires you to dome 150 zombies in a game. Soul Survivor means you have to get to round 15 without dying, which means no downs in solo on World at War because Quick Revive won't do anything. It requires you to kill zombies with three different traps in a single round. After two rounds in the spawn room, knifing and shooting zombies, practicing karate, I opened the gate, ran downstairs, and grabbed the Thompson off the wall. Back in the day, I'd actually buy the door to the stairs right next to the mystery box, but it's obvious now that it wasn't the right move. In my defense, you wouldn't really understand how it was back in the world at war days if you didn't play it there it was the wild west man people did all sorts of weird shit people called each other all sorts of disability and racial slurs and zombies youtubers didn't know what the hell they were doing well i guess two of those things have changed much like world at war zombies in general the plan is simple i chilled out by the mystery box shooting zombies in the head racking up points and headshots to work toward the first achievement since i learned from the past and didn't open the door by the stairs i didn't have to worry about getting snuck up on as foot is actually the third time I did the three shorter achievements. The first time my damn external hard drive failed, wiping a year's worth of footage. That still stings. The second time I used my wife's profile, but my OBS settings may have gotten screwed up by our cat walking on the laptop, so it was pixelated. On round six, the first hellhound round rolled around, so I bought the trench gun off the wall. Dogs are a pushover these days, but holy cow were they a menace back in World at War. Their health scaled as the rounds went up, so you had to dump a lot of rounds into them if you weren't using the trench gun or a wonder weapon. Thankfully, the trench gun one-shots them until I think the 30s, so I put down old Yeller and grabbed the box of goodies for a reload. Unlike the hedges in my yard that I still haven't gotten around to, I trimmed down the zombies to an acceptable level. I opened the doors to the storage hut and prayed for Juggernaut. Of course, the game gave me speed cola, but that's okay because Mountain Dew is pretty good too. More of a Code Rider Major Melon guy, but I'll take the original. I did the same for the doctor's quarters, taking a break to meander through the water. Now, I have to be fair because I'm always ripping on Origins for the mud, the water sucks on Shinonuma. There you go, I was fair to Origins for once on my channel. I got double tap, but it wasn't a complete waste of points. When you open the areas, the additional zombies spawn in, so I used the electric trap to kill a few zombies. I returned to the storage trap to do the same before opening the fishing hut and flogging some zombies, unlocking it's a trap. After opening the fishing hut, disappointingly not giving me Juggernog, I ended the round. Back to the old reliable camping spot by the box on round 8 for more headshots than JFK. At the end of the round, I open up the door to the comms room area and the actual hut itself, buying Juggernaut. It's always super annoying when it's in this area because opening the comms room slows down the zombie spawns and makes it tougher because now there are additional areas where they can come from in this part. No matter, we make things happen on this channel, just not always in a timely manner. After putting down more flaming dogs on round 11 back in the main area, briefly pausing to grab the Wonder Waff out of the box, I return to the comms room to train zombies. This is the classic Shinonuma strat. It's crucial to remember when you make this jump 
jump here. Jump to the right. There's a patch of land that will minimize or completely eliminate the effects of the water. Also, don't jump into this post like a moron like I've done a few times on these attempts. On round 12, I turned enough zombie heads into Swiss cheese and unlocked deadheaded. Since I didn't need points this run and just needed to get to round 15 for Soul Survivor, I decided it was time for a little zappy zappy. Funny enough, I learned from my failed attempts that the Wonder Waff is best used by not shooting the zombies directly, but shooting the floor in front of them. If you shoot directly at them, it misses the first one for some reason, which is really weird. Usually this tactic is found with an area of effect weapon like the Ice Staff on Origins, the Storm Bow on Der Eisendrach, or half of Black Ops 4's Wonder Weapons. Regardless, I killed the final zombie of round 15 and unlocked Soul Survivor. I started a new game on my main profile rather than this one I created to unlock the achievements again, and I cut out all the setups and, frankly, anything before the 20s. Big Baller is one of the four rarest achievements on Shinonuma, requiring you to have earned 75,000 points in a match. For those of you who rarely or never play zombies, you don't need to have 75,000 in the bottom right at a given time. It's a total accumulation throughout the game, so guns like the Thompson, MP40, or any other automatic wall gun are ideal for this one. The annoying thing about it is that in World at War, there's only a max of 24 zombies around on solo before Darius at least. Fewer zombies per round means fewer points per round, which means having to play for higher rounds, which means grayer hair. Seriously, don't look at your facial hair once you turn 30. It gets grayer and grayer every time. In this game, I lucked out and Juggernaug didn't spawn in the comms room, making training a whole lot easier. The flip side is since I needed to get 75,000 points as fast as possible, I wasn't able to use the Wonder Waff that I also had. Seriously, the box RNG in Shino Numa is really good. I wish my RNG was this good when I was playing Axis and Allies. I relied heavily on my Thompson again in this game, and hot damn, I forgot how good some of the guns are in World at War. It was so refreshing going from Black Ops 1 where every gun sucks to World at War while this wall gun is putting in a massive amount of work even in the mid-20s. I wish I could say the same about my mid-20s. I finally have an opinion to say in a video that shouldn't get too much heat in the comments. This is my least favorite World at War map. I just really don't like the jungle swamp aesthetic as much as some of the other locations, and I really only feel Zetsubo no Shima does it well. Someone on Reddit once pointed out that it was all the Asian maps, which might get me cancelled, but that's the price you pay for honesty. Needless to say though, I did play Shino Numa an okay amount back in the day. I stuck mainly with Noct and Varrocked if I could play online because it was too spooky to play alone. This zombie was either a tactical genius or a moron standing here doing nothing. When it comes to dog rounds, I like to abandon the comms room area and head back inside the main hut. This way I have a wider area without touching the water in order to run around and avoid the dogs if necessary. The Wonder Waff usually takes them out, but World at War is jankier than a used back massager, and sometimes your bullets just don't register. While they take away some earning potential, I also bought Bouncing Betty's earlier in the game. They help me during dog rounds, and on normal rounds, I plant them by this little hut after jumping across the water and close to the comms room itself. I noticed that these were the hairier locations that I had to deal with when running the area due to the spawns. There's not too much more to say about Shinonuma, so let's skip to round 27. After dumping more bullets into zombie heads with my Thompson, I unlocked Big Baller and danced around the room in victory. After the hardware and technical difficulties delaying these two achievements and this video in general, I felt like the king of the world. Then I remembered I still had another map, four achievements, and probably need to lose like 70 pounds and calm down. Confession time! Up until a month and a half ago, I never owned Darius on World at War. I may have played it once or twice back in the day, but I never owned it. I played the giant, and aside from the guns and the randomized perks, it seems like it's the same exact map. Uh, yet I still see people rank Darius as an S tier map and the giant lower, but I don't really understand that. I guess we all have nostalgia for different things. Like Shinonuma, I'm breaking this into separate games. I tried to do it all in one, but Samantha trolled me with dogs. Frequent Flyer requires you to teleport 8 times in a match, and 40 Knives requires you to do the impossible. Kill 40 zombies with the Bowie Knife without World at War's stupid knifing killing you first. If you haven't played World at War before or in a very long time, knifing is like diving headfirst into a boulder instead of, you know, just letting it roll by. I spawned in here by the mainframe, dreading having to try and cut out the achievement completed icon in Photo P because the whole map is gray like the achievement, and got to knifing some zombies. Please take a look at how bad this knifing is, like I mentioned earlier. Seriously, I don't know how I didn't boil my toes back in the day over this. Thankfully, a double points dropped in round two, giving me enough points to grab the Thompson and progress to the power room to start round three instead of round four. How does this help, you ask? I guess I don't have to worry about zombies chewing on my ass. After going through a couple rounds in the area, the dog shelter sent me some rejects on round five, but they're much easier to deal with here than in Shino Numa due to the fact that I can just put my back to the wall and have a clear line of sight. As the next round started, I grabbed Juggernaug, paused for five minutes to get my daughter a third cup of water because she drinks more than a goldfish, 
then returned to the game after putting her back to bed. I gave her my controller when she was an infant and she managed to kill three zombies on Shadows of Evil, so maybe she'll take over the channel one day. On round six, I made my move and opened the door behind me. This of course meant I had to be more careful, but it also meant I could buy the Bowie knife. I got medieval on these fools to finish the round. Round seven proved to be a little more difficult as I made one of the most clutch escapes in my zombies career. I also hate to beat a dead horse, but watch this. I'm aiming at the first zombie in this group of crawlers, but when I actually melee, Dempsey dives straight into the middle. Now I guess that's in character for him though, right? I finished the round by linking the teleporters. The first zombie I knifed on round eight proved to be lucky number 40, so he won a lifetime supply of frozen custard. Fortunately, he's dead, so I don't have to follow through. My scam was almost punished, but I made an escape so clutch that it made the early one look like a walk in the park. On round nine, I tried out a different training method than before, killing zombies until there were only a couple left, where I proceeded to blow their legs off. Since I had to teleport eight times in one game, I made like Hayden Christensen the jump. Realizing that I needed more firepower, I decided to postpone teleporting to pack a punch the Thompson. Honestly, it's kind of a crappy upgrade, only giving you 50 more shots and increasing how many bullets you can hold, and I found myself needing to buy more ammo as soon as I had a good amount of points. But I'm a simple man trying to make his way in the galaxy and I'll take what I can get. A round's worth of dead zombies later, and I took my second teleporter ride back to the mainframe. All that's really left to do is farm for points until I have enough to travel eight total times. Let me know if you want me to keep more zombie killing in videos, but lately I'm trying to cut it down to get to the point faster. Rounds 13 and 14 came and went without a hitch, which I guess has to be the case in World at War given the uselessness of solo quick revive. I took the teleporter three times, hoping I didn't get flagged by YouTube for the Nazi imagery on the teleporters. On round 16, I maxed out my frequent flyer miles by taking the teleporter. Unfortunately for me, the round changed after using the first one, so I panicked a bit. Thankfully, I teleported before the zombies spawned in for number 7, and threw a monkey bomb and teleported for number 8 to unlock the achievement. On to game 2. To unlock Pack Addict, you need to pack a punch 5 guns in a match. Then we have the big boy himself, Perkaholics Anonymous. Survive to round 20 without any perks. Something I've technically done twice before in the Black Ops 4 videos if that interests you. I had a feeling that pack a punching wouldn't be too tough, but the Perkaholics Anonymous achievement would be a tough one. Little did I know it would kick my ass. Not as hard as Devoted Follower on Black Ops 4, but there's still an indent. It seemed on previous attempts that no matter where I trained, it was impossible to unlock it. Now look at this. Why did I even leave the ground? I didn't press A! Let's skip ahead to the point of divergence. No, Shailene, I didn't mean you. Much like the last game, the first six rounds were spent linking the teleporters and killing zombies by the power switch. But this time I couldn't get Juggernaug because I'm a recovering perkaholic. But as a reward for my abstinence, I got the PPSH, the king of World at War multiplayer and one of the most beloved guns in zombies history. And I'd eventually pack a punch it at the end of the round. Admittedly, I never knew why this gun was so loved due to my lack of Darice experience. Sure, the PPSH has a crazy rate of fire, little to no recoil, and 71 bullets in the drum, but why was this so beloved in zombies? This is why. Oh, by the way, I bought the trench gun on round 10 during my little old school kill montage and pack-a-punched it. The second of five guns to pack-a-punch. But I barely use the thing. The Reaper here is borderline unfair on the catwalk, which I originally thought wouldn't be doable due to the lack of speed cola, and I wasn't playing with another player. But anything is possible with the pack-a-punched PPSH. Need to clean out your gutters? PPSH. Need to lose weight before your sister who you despise more than anything's wedding? PPSH. Make YouTube videos on a game mode that's been in the slump for the past three years, P P S H. Also, the best damn subscribers and members on the planet. It's so good that I even passed up guns like the Browning and the Wonder Waff twice while spinning the mystery box for monkey bombs. I eventually did get monkey bombs and bought some bouncing Bettys for extra protection. I placed the Bettys down behind me so I could fall back when I had to reload and stay alive long enough to finish this challenge, though the smoke was a bit irritating. Half my mom's side of the family smokes though, so my lungs are used to it. They also help with the dogs, who tended to fly past the top of the stairs and out the door. The rounds kept going by, the Reaper absolutely earning its name by gunning down anything that dared to step on this catwalk to come and say hello. Things started getting 
getting interesting on round 18. Zombies and hellhounds were piling up and pushing through faster than they had been before, and even the PPSH struggled to keep up. I had a couple of close shaves, but thankfully the Betty saved me at the cost of blowing off Dempsey's butthole. Actually, that's probably something he'd like from a Betty. Round 19 was the final boss. To make sure I made it to the end, I started whipping out monkeys out of my pants left and right. I was temporarily blinded by one here because I didn't realize that they hurt you in this game. Guess that's what I get for strapping dynamite on a monkey and throwing it, but yeah, do what you gotta do for clout. Thankfully, with only a few rounds left in my gun, I finished the round and unlocked Perkaholics Anonymous. I wasn't done yet though. Thankfully, these dogs were good boys and brought me a box of ammo. I probably shouldn't have shot them since they were good boys. Yeah, at least I had an excuse to use my shotgun. I chilled out on the catwalk for round 21 to trim down the horde. Not like I didn't have enough points at this point to pack a punch, but a shit ton of points doesn't mean much if you're dead. After reaching an almost acceptable amount of zombies, I bought three guns off the wall and pack a punch them for the achievement. I actually tried to get all the achievements I needed in this game, but after teleporting a couple times, Samantha cheap shotted me with some dogs instead of a power up. Thanks for watching this video. I'll put a playlist with all my other achievement videos on screen. Go ahead and let me know what else you'd like to see from me, as long as it doesn't involve math or science.